Okay. Welcome. Now I'm going to introduce the show and introduce you. Um, I'm live. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Welcome everyone to the show. Welcome everyone. I have a special guest today in the first half of the show. Uh, join, join, join. I just want to go around and, um, you know, uh, bring in people to join the show. So give me a minute. I'm going to be introducing my special guest today that I have. I am so excited all the way from Nigeria. This is just amazing. I'm telling you, this is wonderful. So, um, join, join, join. This is Lillian Life. I am live. I am live. I am live. I am so excited today to have somebody special uh, with me on this show today. I am really very excited. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce my guest for this special show. I'm just trying to invite people, so give me a minute. Uh, just trying to let people know that we are on. Because sometimes a lot of people say, Lillian, you're on and we don't know. So it depends on this channel that I'm using. That's why. So, all right. Thank you so much, Evangelist Jim, for coming. So today I have a wonderful show. I have two segments, actually. This half segment I have the honor and the privilege to have all the way from Nigeria, Evangelist uh, Jim. Let me not miss your name, so I'm going to look at it and introduce you very well. I have with me Evangelist Jim A. Omoruyi. He is the CEO, JJ Gospel Music International Limited, and also the manager, Lawrence J. Osayan Day Foundation. Welcome to Ooh. the show. I am so, so happy to have you here. Good day, madam. It's nice to be on the show. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you so much. You yeah. are so very welcome. So I know that um, the founder and uh, the president of Lawrence J. Osayande, he was on my show a couple of weeks ago. I was so happy to have him also. And now having you as a manager all the way from Nigeria to tell us all the things that are happening is just amazing. I am so excited, and I know that my guests that are joining, they're looking forward to some of the questions I'll be asking you. But before I start the question, I want to ask you, how are you and your family doing? Well, by the special grace of God, we are all fine and healthy to the glory of the Almighty God. Thank you so fine. much. Thank you so much. Thank you, viewers, everybody that is joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Jeff, all the way from Australia, is watching. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. Please share the video. Let people know today is a wonderful, uh, we have wonderful, wonderful program here today. All right. I'm going to go in to ask you first. I see your name and I see evangelist. So tell us, do you run a ministry or you work with a church or you go and do mission work? What is there about the evangelist thing? Thank you very much. Uh, by the grace of God, I'm an evangelist of the Almighty God. Uh, my church is... Uh... Hello, can you I'm hear me? You. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, Winners uh, Foundation, and uh, we are one of the most uh, important church in Amen. the world. Name... Um, I have been this uh, into evangelism since 2017. Amen. And I've been able to release an album in a gospel way. Oh wow. So you are a singer also. Yes, like you said that yes. you sing. So yes. you sing because I was like does uh, it have a music is, company or oh wow. This is one of the album that I have released and uh, I'm working on the second album very soon. It's going to be out. Wow, that is so wonderful. That's the great expectation. Say it again, sir. You said it's titled The Great Expectation. Oh, I hope we're not losing him there. Okay, my guest, like I said, is Mr. Uh, Evangelist Jim Agagawa, is all the way from. Nigeria that it will be speaking to us today. Uh, why I wait for him to come back. I want to welcome all of you that are coming to the show today. I have two segments today, like I said. The half segment is with evangelist Jim A. Agawa. He's all the way from Nigeria. And also, uh, I want to ask him a lot of important questions today. 
about the Lawrence J. Osayende Foundation that he's running because they are doing a lot of things in Africa where they are helping a lot of children, young girls, especially, like I said, not too many men. And I said that with respect, not too many men, you know, sometimes think about some of the things for women. It's not that they don't have the mind for women. They do. But, you know, men, they are created a little bit differently from women. So the way they do their things is a little bit differently from us. So welcome back, sir. So I'm going to go straight into my questions for you because I was talking about the foundation. I said not too many men has that vision. But Mr. Jeff Osayande, uh, uh, unmute yourself. It looks like you're muted. Unmute yourself so we can hear you when you talk. Your, your device is muted. Uh, so you got to unmute yourself. So like I was saying, I'm going to ask you some questions about the foundation. Um, I don't know if he's hearing me. His device is muted. Uh, bear with us, uh, my lovely viewers. Thank you so much. Cindy Poch, give it all the way from Spain. Good evening, my people. Thank you for joining the show. We appreciate you. Uh, Mr. Jim, are you hearing me? Your phone or uh, device, whatever you're using is muted. I tried to unmute you, but I couldn't. So you have to unmute yourself um, so that we can hear you. So I'm talking about the foundation by Mr. Jeff, uh, Mr. Lawrence, uh, Jeff Osayande, that they actually are dealing with young girls. They are dealing with a lot of young girls in the community, um, helping young girls, helping them to create a lot of things, pardoning them, helping them with school bags and helping them with so many different things. So I, I really want to talk to him about that, to see what they are doing, and how this pandemic is affecting them. I want to also talk to him about that, you know. So uh, while we wait for them, I want to say welcome everyone that is watching us. Thank you so much. So while we are waiting for him, I am going to uh, maybe emphasize on some few things. People are going through this pandemic. You know, a lot of people are still locked down, like where I am, we're still locked down. And um, so many other places are still locked down. Some are partially locked down. But what I want us to start thinking about is the post-pandemic. Afterwards, what is going to happen? Because a lot of people are just like, oh, let's open, let's open, let's open. If we open now, uh, what is going to happen? Mr. Jim, are you back? I'm going to bring him back. Um, I thought I saw him in the studio. Um, it looks like he's not ready for us yet. Um, I, we can see him. Sorry for that. Uh, while we wait for him, after this whole pandemic, what is going to be next? Because people are not thinking about the post-traumatic effect that is going to have on people. It's going to have a lot of serious mental health issues with a lot of people in the community. Because a lot of people have lost their jobs. A lot of people are scared. A lot of people are traumatized. Maybe they tested positive before they are feeling very well now. They're very scared to go out. They are scared to go back to work. So a lot of people are very worried. So what is this thing going to cause for our people is a big problem that people have to watch out for. And that brings us to my guest this afternoon, who happens to be a medical practitioner. She's going to be running us through a lot of these things. She's going to tell us so many things. So please, don't go away. We have a lot of things to talk about today. We have a lot to talk about. I'm still waiting for my guest. Uh, it looks like he's having a network issue. So maybe what I'm going to do is to call him uh, on WhatsApp and see. Thank you so much. I'm going to call him on WhatsApp and uh, maybe he can give us an audio version of the question so that we don't waste the air time that we have. You know, I'm going to try that with him. You know, so I'll be able to ask him some of the questions about the foundation. What are they doing now? What do they intend to do? Because people have to think about that. Yes, the first phase was we entered into it. Now we are in it, we're still in it, and afterwards, that's what they call the post. What is going to happen afterwards to the children that they're looking after? What do they think about the girls? How are they going to care for the girls? So I really want to know all these things. And I know that you guys want to know too. So let me see if I can call him on the phone and let him come in audio so we can all talk to him and listen to him and see what he has to say to us, uh, if possible um let me try him again we can get him um he's not in the studio 
Uh, so if you can come in audio, that would be nice. I'm calling him. Uh, so um, I'm sure he's really working hard to see that he comes back to the studio. Uh, they are not picking the phone. So this is very important. A lot of people don't think that mental health is there in our community. It is. So there's going to be a lot of depression. I can see him in the studio. Looks like he's ready for us to bring him back on. Are you ready? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> it's okay. It happens all the time. You are not alone. Trust me, even the big television, it happens all the time. Uh, good, good. Okay. He's right here with us. It happens all the time. So don't beat yourself up. The network here is terrible. Yeah, the network. Yes, we understand that. Yeah. The network in Africa, the bandwidth is heavy. So we understand when we are interviewing somebody from outside the Western country, we understand the load of the network. So I'm going to go straight into thank the question. Thank you very much. How is the pandemic affecting the foundation? How is it affecting the girls you people are caring for? Well, so far, so good. The situation in Nigeria is calm because uh, we have not really entered the epic period. According to the speculations here, the epic is going to be between July and June. So that is when we are expecting an, an epic in Nigeria. So the situation at the moment, it's not so bad. We are on lockdown, but partial lockdown because uh, activities are still going on, uh, except schools has been closed officially. Most of the industries has been shut down. Uh, government offices has been closed. The market actually is in operation because uh, without food, nobody can survive the situation. Absolutely, so, yes. Even here, the market is on. As far as the foundation is concerned, we are still open and we are still operating. We are doing our best to make sure that we advocate to the society the importance of their stay at home, which the government has laid down as part of the rule to control the pandemic. So how we, do you so reach far, out we to have the done up to about So now, how do you reach out to the girls, to this boss, some of the materials that they need to them. How do you guys, how are you guys managing that? Uh, at the moment, that particular part of our operation is on hold because the schools are closed. We cannot reach out to the students because majority of all the students, they are home at this moment, except the ones that are on online studies. They are the ones that are in operation for now. So we are not reaching the female student at this moment because we don't have access to them. What we do at this moment is visiting the less privileged, providing, okay. providing the necessary palliative measures that we can afford at this time, like food items, like sanitizer like the face mask those are the things we are distributing wow. at the moment that yes. is amazing so do you have them you guys are not going to those uh, facilities of the less privileged people to hand out all these necessary things to them that is a great job yes yes it's job. not only the it's not only the facilities where the less privileged are. Okay. Even in our homes, our private homes, okay. the communities, wow. the less privileged. Yeah. So we also reach out to them and we also distribute the necessary things we can to them as well. That's wonderful. So like an NGO, like I mean, like an NGO, like uh, uh, this Osayende Foundation, the uh, those yeah. state governor or the, the state government, are they providing or adding to you guys what you guys have now so that you'll be able to disburse more? Because I figure that, like they do in the Western country too, they give a lot of some of the things they have to the NGOs they know that are functional. And I know because I've been following the Science Foundation, I know that they've been very functional, open, and talking about so many things. Have they been able to give you guys some 
kind of disbursement to add to what you have so that you'll be able to supply to the communities? Well, madam, the way it works here in Nigeria is not the way it is over there. I must tell you, the government on their part, they are not doing enough. They are not trying. They've received a lot of pledges from individuals. They've received a lot of funds from outside the country, like the World Health Organization, the United Nations, the European Union. They've all donated massively to this coronavirus of 18. The federal government, at this moment, nobody knows what they are doing with the money or what they are waiting for. Hospitals are not properly in place, as I speak to you at this moment. Exactly. We don't even have electricity. We don't have electricity to power the hospitals, even if the amenities are there. The okay. situation here is terrible. Wow, this is so sad to hear. It's sad because yes. the reason why I'm very happy to have you on this show today is that, you know, we say a lot of things on our shows. They, you know, people bring yes. us stories. But it's all the best thing to, you know, the most exciting thing to always do when I'm here is to see that when I get people from Nigeria, they are like the first hand, the honest people to tell you, this is what is on ground. And people who are watching will be able to say, yes, this person is yes. on ground in Nigeria and is telling us the real thing that is going on. Now, there was something I carried on my show like last week or two weeks ago. They said that a hospital, I think that hospital should be, because when you're going to worry, uh, from Ring Road, I think that's the central hospital. They said that the central hospital was kind of closed down because it's dilapidated and they don't have workers and all that. And somebody brought the video that is circulating. And a lot of people that are sick who don't have money went there. They didn't have anybody to attend to them. And we have such pandemic that is going on. And I know that at those state, they're beginning to have some cases. Is it true that that hospital is closed down, number one? And is it true, like you rightly said, now no light and the hospitals have nothing to write home about. How are they managing the cases that they get? Well, Nigeria is in a very bad shape. The situation we are is very, very bad. I must be frank with you. Like you rightly said, the general hospital in Benin City here was shut down for the purpose that is going to be fumigated according to the state government. Okay. The hospital was shut down for some days. Maybe that was the period those people, they visited the hospital. Not that it was officially shut down. Okay, so it was a temporary thing. It was shut down. Yes, it was a temporary thing because they want to promulgate the old hospitals before they now allow start allowing patients into it again. So as we speak, the hospital yeah. is in operation. Oh, that's perfect. So you see, it's always very good to get people who are on grant to tell us the truth. Yeah. Because you know, we we just do the news, you get, you know, videos and information. So, and I tell people, sometimes when we get that news too, it's good to also find out. Uh, but I'm so glad that you're clarifying now that it was temporarily shut down for fumigation and it is open now. But I must tell you the truth too. Even if it is open now, with what we saw on the video, the shape at which we saw the hospital, still not very impressive. To me, not impressive. I don't know about other people, but not impressive to me. It's, it's, it's in a very bad shape. I must confess, it's very, very bad. Yeah. When you visit most of our government hospitals, there is nothing to write home about. There is nothing to write home about. Wow. The workers there are just there because they want them to be there. They are not there because they want to work. They are there just to represent their names and at the end of the month, they receive their salary. You will imagine a situation. I went there with my dad about, um, I think, four months ago. You understand? There was a program, a TV was on, and there was this kind of uh, Nigerian movie that was going on. And they were all focused, watching that particular program, 
And they did not even bother to notice that people were around. I have to shout and make sure I even off that particular set that day. And I started shouting at them. Is this the way you people work in your hospitals? Patients wow. are around. You are busy washing more. That is unbelievable. Wow. That is to tell you the extent of which our organized. The negligence. Why the government is you, not organized. Before I ask you, the, we are not. Before I go to the next question, I want to I welcome everyone that is watching us. Thank you so much for your comments. Everybody, you guys are wonderful. All government hospitals in general is bad. Favor of Jabo, thank you so much. God bless you for speaking the truth. Somebody is saying to you, Cindy, uh, from Spain, thank you so much. Um, thank you, everybody that has been joining this show. Uh, MC Agali, thank you so much. He said, nice one, thank you so much. We all, we appreciate you guys. Share, 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 let people know because you know, we have to keep talking. We have to keep speaking the truth about what is going on in our country. Otherwise, it's not going to get better. But now let me go back to your foundation and ask you another question. So now, um, the foundation has been in Nigeria for a while. I understand. You know, how do you guys reach out to these, lay, uh, you know, female, young children that you are caring for? How do you reach out to them? Well, uh, when we started at the beginning, it was not easy because we are committed to our work. We have to do the right thing. We visit the Ministry of Education, which was the first step, and we make our intentions known to the ministry. Yes. Uh, any programs we are doing with any of the secondary school, because our major Priority is on the secondary school, which most especially is the female schools. Yes. We have to seek an approval from the Ministry of uh, Education. Once we get the approval from the Ministry of Education, we will now visit the school with the approval, seeking a date with them, yes. which we can come over to do some sanitization programs there. They will now have to maybe at that particular day they will not be able to fix a date maybe after some few days or few weeks they will now call us that they have picked a date we should come at this particular date then we have to arrange and we we have to go to that particular school and we did all the necessary things we have to do teaching them how important hygiene is especially during their monthly flow after the sanitization programs, we have to distribute parts, sanitary parts, to wow. the female students. Wow, this is, this is amazing. Doing. This is so amazing. Yeah. Well, before I let you go, I'm going to ask one more question. So now, uh, because I know my second guest is already waiting in the studio, I am so excited to have you here today at the, uh, the Lawrence J. Osayende Foundation, the great work you guys are doing in Nigeria. And for people who don't know, if you're just joining us, our evangelist Jim Omori is the manager of the Lawrence J. Uh, Osayende Foundation that is based in Nigeria. The founder is actually based in Australia and is doing a lot of great things. And they have what is called Pad an African Child. So where they collect pads, even if you don't give the pads, by pads, you can give money. They have a lot of their things that are going on, helping young girls in a dose state. And according to the president, when I spoke to him, he is also planning to expand around Nigeria. So he's not just an Edo state state. So please, it is good to support this course. They have their information, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram. And please, it is very important to support this kind of course so that our young girls can be sanitarily taken care of. You know, some of these girls, you, you can't even believe what they use when they are in their monthly period. And for these men to take up this course, it is something that we all have to support. And I'm really very proud of you and proud of the president and all the people that are working with the organization. I'm proud of you guys. Somebody said here, yeah, the nurses and doctors in Nigeria General Hospital don't care about the humans. I was at Worry General Hospital last year for humanitarian services. I left there crying. This is from favor of Jabo. I think we need to talk after my show. You know, God bless you, sir. Somebody says, this is from Eunice. I uh, says, God bless you, sir. So I'm going to ask you one more or two questions before I let you go. Thank you very what much. is the plan for the foundation after the pandemic? Okay. 
What is the plan, sir, for the foundation after the pandemic? Well, our plan, our plan is, is simple. We cannot do more than what we have been doing before because what we are doing is already in line with the principles of the foundation. We are going to continue from where we stop, and uh, the major program we are having on the ground is uh, we are trying to organize a kind of debate competition. Oh, wow. In all, in all over the 18 local government of uh, those states. The, the program is going to take about two months program because going through all the local governments in a those states, a team yes. local government is not going to be easy. We are going to have 18 students representing each of the local governments that will now come to Benin City for the grand finale for the debate competition. Any of the student that emerged the winner of that competition is going to have a scholarship throughout the university level. Oh, wow. That That's is our amazing. major program that we are having on ground. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much for coming to the show today. But before I let you go, what is one word you want to tell our audience? You know, as a minister of the gospel and also somebody who is helping now to do a good cause in a foundation, you know, what is one word you want to leave with us? Considering the crisis that is on ground today, a lot of people are pained. A lot of people are crying that have lost their loved ones. A lot of people are suffering. They don't have food. A lot of people are emotionally crushed. What is one word that you want to tell them today? Go ahead, sir. You Can you hear me? Faith. They should believe. Yes, I can hear you Okay. clearly. My, my advice to each and every one of us is we should have faith and believe in the Almighty God. With Him, there is nothing that is impossible. The pandemic has come and is going to go so long we do the right thing. Thank you so much. For those of you that are just joining, my guest has been Evangelist Jim Amori, all the way from Nigeria. He's a gospel artist. You said you have an album. Where can people find yeah. your album? Are they you can on find YouTube? It on the website. What is yes, your website, we are, on, sir? we are on YouTube and we are also on Twitter. Okay, please do us a favor, send us all, all your information so we can put it down on our video I site. I know a lot of people that I've had as my guests. I have a compilation I'm doing. I'm going to put everybody's stuff together so that people can actually visit each one of them and see what they're doing. I'm working on that. But so send us all your information so that we'll be able to put that on the, you know, down on my page for people to be able to see. And if they want to contact you uh, to come and minister in their church or program, they'll be able to do that. And also, please make sure you guys that are watching, tell people about this foundation. Let them support it. It is a good cause. Let all of us support it. So that they'll be able to be helping our young girls, you know, back home. Thank you so much. I think his stuff has disconnected.